Hi everyone, and welcome back to our lecture series on optimization for machine learning. The topic we are going to discuss today is Newton's method, right? And uh, if you recall, the last video ended with a discussion on linear conversions for gradient descent. And even though this is widely used in, in, in particular in machine learning, it is also favorable to have higher order convergence rates. We talked about superlinear convergence, and I gave a very brief glimpse that Newton's method would have quadratic convergence. And this is what this video is all about. I will tell you what Newton's method is, how it works, and also discuss a little bit the drawbacks and the reasons for it not being widely used in machine learning. But nevertheless, this is a very good benchmark for many optimization algorithms. And so you should be familiar with the basic concept, which is actually not very hard to grasp. Um, yes, before we start, um, this is something I should have mentioned in the video before as well, but we will put it into the comments. Um, if you want to have a closer look at optimization, there's a, a brilliant book by Nosedal and Wright, which is called Numerical Optimization. And there you will find tons of details on these techniques, also a lot more on convergence rates and so on. But let's jump right into Newton's method here. And what is this about? And before I, you know, fill this sketch and tell you a little bit what it means is, uh, let's first look where it comes from. And the idea is actually not initially from optimization, but it's about root finding. Right? So we have a function, let's call it m, that depends on a parameter w. And the root means that for the w star, for a particular value, this function has the value 0. Right? So it's not immediately optimization. It just means give me the value for w that for, for which the function m has the value 0. Right? So if we look at the sketch now, this would be our function m for which we are trying to find the root. Right? So this value here. And so what the idea behind this is, is really to not go using gradients, but use a secant approximation for this root. Okay, so let's start here. And the idea is actually fairly simple. We have now our function here, and this is our starting value. Let's say this is w0 maybe, right? And then we can consider the tangent here. And the tangent will go through zero eventually. Right, we will also discuss, it doesn't have to be the case, then Newton's method runs into issues, but let's assume that we find a point where this crosses zero, and let's say this is the update that we are going to take for our w, so this is going to be w1. Okay, so we use the tangent information, which is the derivative in 1D, or the gradient in higher dimensions of w0, and using this tangent, we can find the zero vector. So what I mean by this is basically, or what I can approximate the tangent with is m prime at my ith iterate is given by the model value at m0, oh, sorry, m wi, w0 in this case, wi here, right? So this function value, which is here w, uh, sorry, m of w0 divided by this distance, okay? So really, we are going to construct this triangle here, and you see this value, or the, the slope is given by this difference divided by this difference. So this function value, minus zero, which we don't need, divided by this distance, which is wi minus wi minus one. Okay? So basically this triangle is, a, is, a, is an approximate, or not an approximation, gives us the, the gradient here. And now you see that we can simply rephrase this in terms of finding the update, right? So what we have now is m of wi, this one, um, oh, excuse me, the wi. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply with this, the sum here, or the, the, the difference, divide by the m, and then put this to the other side. So what I'm going to get is this goes to the left, wi is given by 
wi minus 1 minus m of w0, uh, sorry, wi, I am talking in zeros here because of the sketch, divided by the slope. Okay, so let's have a look at this. We have that our updated weight is the previous weight minus uh, the function value divided by the derivative of the function value. And so this really reminds us of gradient descent, right? Seems like an iterative update. So an easy rephrasing of this one gives us this here. And we see, okay, this looks fairly similar to optimization, right? So what does root finding have to do with optimization? And you know, if you think about this, um, what is optimization about? What we want to find is not the root of the function, what we want to find is the root of the gradient. So in fact, it is a root finding problem, but not for the function itself, the loss function, but for the gradient of the loss function. And so what this means in the context of optimization, this becomes a system, right? We replace our m now, this is why I picked a different name for this function now, m is now our gradient. So the root finding problem of the gradient becomes in Newton's method just finding the zero of, of gradient of L. And so what we have is that now I'm going to shift this, the index by one just to have it similar to what we had before. Wi plus one is Wi minus, and now I have to divide by a derivative and if this is the gradient of the loss function, this is the second order derivative or the Hessian matrix. So what I have here is the second order derivative of my loss function at wi, but now inverted times the gradient of the loss function for wi. And so you see, it's basically this one, only that I have to add one degree of derivation, if you wish, for the derivative, right? This is now a gradient, this is now the Hessian matrix. And so if we talk about this in terms of a scalar problem, like we had here, then this would be a step length in terms of the second derivative, right? So in 1D, it's very easy. This is an adaptive step size. This is somewhat linked to the curvature of the problem, right? So if you have a strongly curved problem, high curvature, one divided by this gives you small step lengths. Small curvature will give you a long step length, right? And so what you then see is in higher dimensions, it actually becomes more problematic because well, you cannot divide by a non-scalar. This becomes then the inverse of a matrix. So this is the Hessian matrix. In fact, H denoted as H W I which is, if we have Q optimization parameters, a Q by Q matrix. So quadratic matrix, and if it has full rank, you can invert it. And this is the, the gradient as we know it. So if you wish, it's, it's gradient descent, steepest gradient descent, but with a particular choice of the step size. And a, a very particular, because it's not a scalar, right? This manipulates the gradient in all sorts of ways. And now if we look at this, then we can see why this has quadratic convergence, right? So now this is my new function value, and I can repeat the iteration I did before. And so you see we have a smaller um, a slope here. So if I repeat this now, I in fact do get really close to the optimum already. Oh, sorry, this is W2. And now let's switch colors again. This gives me this function value. And we see now because of my sloppy sketch with the fat lines, I am already in the minimum or very close by. But so you see the steps increase uh, in terms of, of how far we move depending on, on the slope. And so in fact, what is even more important is that the number of correct digits increases or doubles every iteration. So this one in fact has quadratic convergence. We're not going to go into the proof. As I said, in this brilliant book, you can find all the details. But what's really important is that this is, let's say, the gold standard of optimization in terms of how few iterations you need for the algorithm to converge. However, there are also a few 
issues with this and one very important issue is that this has only local conversions. Right? And do not confuse this with a convergence to a local minimum as we had in gradient descent. This really means the Newton algorithm only converges to a root or the root of the gradient if you start sufficiently closely. But right? in gradient descent we didn't have this. You start somewhere, you go downhill until you end up in a local minimizer. Here what can happen, and I started with this in the beginning, maybe this secant doesn't point you closer to this one because the function has a strong curvature and whatnot, so you can really have divergence. So Newton's method, you have to be very careful about picking the initial guess. You're not guaranteed to converge from any initial condition. You need to pick it wisely, which is why it can be used as, let's say, a consecutive routine after something that brings you close to the minimum. Second thing that's really important, we have the Hessian matrix here which means we have two second order derivatives and I think this is a Q by Q matrix and I think of a neural network where Q is a million or even higher. Then this one is a huge matrix so you even run into memory issues to, to even store the thing and more importantly computing it is really really expensive. So there's two disadvantages, you have to be very careful about um, where to start and you have to be careful about the price you need to pay. Like we said quadratic conversion is very very powerful but not if every iteration costs you so much that in the end you lose a lot of efficiency. So again, it cannot get any quicker in terms of the number of iterations, but you have to pay the price. Um, so it's still fairly useful to know about this, I think, and there's always a step in between. We're going to discuss this in a little bit um, later on, but this is the idea of, of quadratic convergence, right? And so before we finish, one final comment maybe. Um, this can be extended by, or extended in terms of efficiency, by something that we call quasi-Newton method. When I say quasi-Newton method, what do I mean by this? It means you replace the Hessian matrix I'm just adding the index here now to, to make it shorter, by a matrix Bi that is a first order pro approximation. Right, so the idea is, um, in a nutshell, we do not compute the Hessian matrix because it's so expensive, we use some matrix B that serves as a surrogate for the Hessian matrix. It's an approximation and first order means we build this approximation out of gradient information, right? And the most popular scheme that you can have here is the so-called BFGS scheme. Named after Broyden, Fletcher, Goldfarb and Shannon. So you can again find all the details in this book. But there's a, a trade-off, you get rid of the Hessians, you use these updates, you also lose quadratic convergence. So this one is a good intermediate solution where you have um, superlinear convergence, as we also discussed last time. Right? Problem again, how to store this if Q goes really high. So you see there's a whole world to explore about optimization, but I think this gives us a very good overview from linear methods to quadratic methods to superlinear methods. And in the end, it's a matter of, of the specific application, which method to choose and which one gives you the best computational efficiency. Thank you.